Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Championship Series America. We have one more best of five to bring you for today's challenger matches. The last challenger match that will determine who from America gets to go to Premier League for season three. Nate, I think the day, this is a great way to end it, right? We started with Puck and Kane. It was an exciting series. We've had great series overall, but now I think this is going to be exciting. We have Hitman, that notorious Hitman record. I really want to see Hitman go for some absolute craziness. Like, that's that's what I'm here for, man. We Anybody who's watched any NA stuff, if you haven't seen Hitman play before, I'll tell you what, he is an absolute monster. So far, if you guys have missed any of the Challenger matches, of course, the VODs will be available on this channel, but just to run through again with you, we had victories yesterday and today by Masa, Jadon, Neeb, Kane, Polt, Violet, and now two Americans left to play. I actually don't know anything at all about Hitman. And to be perfectly honest, nobody does. So that's an exciting thing. We get we don't know I, where we're expecting. I almost want Hitman to win just so we can get him out here for round 32 so we can see him. Is he actually human? Maybe the reason why we don't know anything is because he's been playing from outer space, which would violate the rules. There, so there is a name on his profile and I thought it might have been crossing a line if I searched it on Facebook. I wouldn't do that. No. 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 You, you, you'll find out it's like you, it's someone that's not actually been alive for like 100 years, something really weird. He's well, stolen an identity just to compete in WCS. <laughs> yes, exactly. We don't know anything about him. He is uh, known for his very aggressive strategies on ladder. I have, uh, I, as I said, I've, I've had the pleasure of being, I have been Oracle into three gate Maximus Black all in by him. That's just, you know, I, I've, I've faced that. I have been one base blink stalkered right now. I have been I have been killed by Hitman pretty much every possible way a Paras can kill a Terran without taking a natural expansion. Yeah, I am looking forward to seeing. I think that's the great thing, right? We know Hitman's a, an elusive figure. We don't know who he is. And at the same time, I don't think anyone knows what the heck they expect from him. Yeah, that's that's the best part. I'm hoping that he plays to his, his standard style. I'm hoping that we see Hitman come out and be cheesy because that's what I want to see, especially since I know Xenocider you know, the American punk who came out wearing an American robe flag, this guy, in uh, in round 32 of last season, you know, when we, when we did his player video, he did it with an American flag draped around him. This kid is American as it gets. In the bottom right, he is the American evil genius's Terran, Xenocider. And starting us off in the last series of the day, it is the blue Protoss playing for himself, Hitman. You know what the best thing about today is, Nate? About this series in particular? Tell me. No matter what happens, an American's going through. That's actually a really good point. That's an amazing point. That's a good point. You know, we have we've 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 got Canadians that have managed to come in. That's one of the you know I mean I I felt I felt the, you know the the pride of a bald eagle climbing out of my chest when Neeb defeated Stardust. It was a it was, was it, a ma it was a magical feeling. Was it like a, a xenomorph bald eagle? I have no idea what you're talking about. Alien. The, the oh, little thing, the oh, chest burster. Okay. I guess we, we, we were kind of talking about Hitman being from outer space. Well, Xenocider is actually going to cheese the cheeser as his way to start this series off with a very fast barracks placed outside of his base. He's just going to 11-11 him. This is one way to play StarCraft. He's like, Hitman's not going to scout me. I can just build these in the most obvious scouting path you would possibly go on. Yeah, scouting is, a, uh, is you know, a skill for someone that's going to go for a second base maybe or wants to know what his opponent Hitman just comes in here and he has a plan. He says, I know what I'm going to do. And look at that. We see two gases going down already before 15 supply. Yeah, I mean, it's not something super crazy just yet. We don't know if he's going to fully saturate those gases. He doesn't have a probot on the map or anything like a proxy yet. We'll probably see him do that as he starts the cybernetic score, maybe right before he starts the cybernetic score. But Xenocider clearly showing he does not want to uh, give Hitman a straight up game on this map. I think this is one of those maps where someone like Hitman can be very uh, successful with something like a one or two base blink stalker push. Um, clearly not proxying, but Xenocide is going to send the SCV in now. And he has to be thinking to himself, he's like, okay, what am I dealing with this game? It's nothing crazy. There's only two probes mining gas at the moment. This could be a pretty economic strategy from Hitman to start things off. And that will end up hurting him. Hitman starts a Zealot because he's worried about an engineering bay block. Um, Xenocider really wants him to cancel that Zealot. If he cancels that Zealot, I think Xenocider can actually win but it's very difficult to beat Protoss players if they open with that Zealot just because it makes getting the bunker down so much more difficult right. for two racks. Right, I definitely like oh. this, though. Oh, uh, so the Zealot gets candled. You yeah. should start the bunker immediately. Like, as soon as he starts to push up, like, there's the Nexus. Now start the bunker as soon as you can. Like, the longer Xenocider waits, 
the closer that Mothership Core gets to coming out and getting ready for a Photon Overcharge. In order to win with the two racks against Paras, the win condition is, generally speaking, to get two bunkers up. If you have two bunkers up and one of them is in range of the gateway of the Paras, then you shut down their production and you can you can just kind of hold on forever. So this bunker that's being built right now, this one that's just started, is the most important structure in the game for Xenocider. He really needs that to finish. The probes are being pulled to try to stop this. Xenocider knows that Hitman can afford to lose a few probes. He really has to finish that bunker if he wants to win this game. Absolutely, Nate. I love the hit. Uh, Xenocider, he waited. He had a few Marines. This Mothership Core needs to be careful. It doesn't want to get caught up by the Marines. And Xenocider pulled a lot of SUVs. He has to get the bunkers oh, down, as you said. Oh, the Stalker does finish. The Gateway is not unpowered despite losing that pylon. But that second bunker, it's almost ready. The Mothership Core has been pushed out of position. Not enough energy, not even remotely close to enough energy for a Photon Overcharge. And with this bunker finishing, I think Xenocider's got this one in the bag now. He should be able to finish up the third bunker. Um, this is... You know, this was a, a classic Terrence slice of cheese, and he has served it on a hot dish to, to Hitman. Absolutely. Let's hope that, you know, he doesn't overcommit. He doesn't lose too much. He doesn't stay too long out of these bunkers. But I think that, yeah. He wants that mothership core. Oh, he gets he it. it. I don't know how Hitman could possibly win now. These stalkers, you know, they can't really out-micro the Marines in this bunker. If Xenocider targets the weak, just targets one stalker at a time, no amount of micro is going to save Hitman in this position, especially once he loses that gateway. Uh, without a mothership core, without folks in overcharge, he just can't compete with the with the Terran forces that are out on the map. Yeah, and they're continuing. And it's, he's going to lose the gateway. No more stalkers. Yep, lots of supply moving across the Marines. Those stalkers aren't going to be able to do anything. A ton of probes have gone down, and Xenocider has flipped the script on Hitman. Yeah, he, that Hitman was supposed to be the one that was bringing out the uh, bringing out the chatter with either a proxy gateway or Stargate or whatnot. Hitman actually playing a little bit greedy this game and being punished in uh, in full force for it. He was, and I just didn't expect the, the second uh, you know, Nexus to come down for Hitman. I, yeah, I mean, a lot, a, lot of a, lot of people, a lot of people are blown away when Hitman builds the second Nexus. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the Marines are going to continue to come in. They're going to kill these probes. The Stalkers really aren't going to be able to do anything. Really, at this point, uh, Xenocider could lose everything and still be in a great position. Yep, he's, he's, in, uh, he's in a good spot. I mean, at this point, it's just you have the mule back home. You have so many more workers than your opponent. You're not worried about anything. Even if these bunkers all eventually do get cleaned up, he's still gotten more than what he wanted with this. And, you know, to be fair, what he wanted was to just outright win the game. And I do still believe he has. Like, Hitman is just recovering from this is, is impossible. Like, he needs to make some sick, weird voodoo. I don't know if he has a voodoo doll of Xenocider. I don't know if that's illegal. Xenocider's not 18. If he just wants to, like, stab him with it, maybe that's his only chance. But I don't, I don't think voodoo is also allowed in official WCS rules. Hitman is uh, in a really tough spot. Voodoo sounds like a map hack IRL, right? But yeah. on the other side, we have another barracks coming down. Now Marauders are going to be soon in production as this tech lab finishes. So Marines, Marauders, I, what is Hitman going to do? I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. Uh, Stim is also on the way. This is just going to be one base Terran. Not something you see too often against Protoss. The, the problem is Hitman doesn't have enough money that if he saturated his gases to try to go for like DTs or something, he actually wouldn't have the minerals to build a gateway to get a Twilight, to get a Dark Shrine. Like right, he he's has trying to, to chrono out. All he can do is sit back and just chrono probes and eventually work away at this bunker. And Xenocider is going to be like, okay, well, I've got four barracks. I'm not really worried anymore. I'm just maybe run these Marines over. If I get another Stalker kill, it's it's great. If I don't, well, it's still weakened. And he's gotten everything he could possibly want. And more kits once. Oh, he's he gonna gets get this next one. one. He oh. does. All right, so there's, there's one Stalker on the map. Two about to come out. But again, uh, these barracks are floating back. I'm impressed. I'm impressed that Hitman is still in this game. He has taken such a brutal beating. Like, Xenocider builds one bunker at the front of his natural. Two Stalkers are never going to break it. He has Marauders on the way. You said it. He has Stim coming in, too. And Hitman is just beyond broke. So he's been, Hitman has continued to chrono probes, right? Despite, you know, trying to distract the Marines and all that, he is chrono probes. We have another Mothership core on the way. It's 17 to 21 workers. Now, Hitman has thrown a lot of minerals away. He's lost a lot, lost a gateway, had tech uh, delayed. Now, what can he do to come back? Do you think he's going to go for, he's like, all right, fine, I'll play the games I normally play and we're going to get cheesy. I think he has to, or at the very least, he has to probe scout next game because something like that is obviously uh, inexcusable when you really think about it. Like you losing in this scenario, the majority of Terran players, myself included, I, I don't think that two axing is a is a very uh, solid strategy versus Protoss. But Xenocider calculated that Hitman wouldn't S wouldn't probe scout. If you don't probe scout, then it's actually possible to make it work. I mean, Xenocider is getting a bit brazen out on the map like this. There but are once two the stim is done, he's good. Yeah, two Marauders, a couple more Marines coming up. Stim is about to finish. And, you know, the Stalkers, yeah, they can move away, but Hitman 
is not in as good a position as Xenocider. No, no, he starts that Nexus up, but it's, uh, you know, that's not going to be the game winner. He's, he should probably be forced to cancel. As soon as these Stalkers run over, I imagine Xenos can just stim and kill everything. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, the Hugo gets one. Oh, the Sentry does get a pretty decent force field. Two Marines caught out, but this Nexus is going to get it canceled. There's still no tech on the way for Hitman. Like, no. he must just be thinking about the next game. There's, there's, there's not, there's not to be done here. He starts at Twilight. So I'm imagining he's just gonna be, if, if Hitman is allowed to, to live for another couple minutes, he'll probably try to squeeze out a DT and just cross his fingers and hope that Xenocider falls asleep at his computer right now. But that's highly unlikely to happen. No, don't think it's gonna happen. I think Xenocider is actually on, on a rush right now, getting into this first game with such a nice tempo. Yeah, I mean, right now, if I was Xenocider, I'm basically just sitting there like, I am happiest kid alive. Like, you're just sitting there, you're like, okay, well, I've won this game already. I'm just, uh, you know, my opponent's taking a while to die. But me losing this is borderline impossible. Like, Xenocider, to lose this game, would actually, I would actually be like, I would be impressed. Um, he is just in such a good position from the way that he, from the way that he got all that damage done at the start, the way he executed his two racks. Um, you really couldn't ask for more as a Terran, especially as a cheesy Terran. And Hitman's gonna go into Blink, okay, so he's gonna try 3-gate Blink. Yeah, well, but... you can't Blink if you don't have Stalkers, Nate. Yeah, that is, uh, that is very true, Lycan. As expert analysis, I, I completely agree. Yeah, so the Mothership Core, it was killed last time, so it doesn't have the energy for a photon overcharge this time. And he's the dropping Vanderbilt meals. is uh, getting dropped. I think I think Xenocider has lost enough ladder points to Hitman to, to tell himself that this is justified. He is okay with this. He's just like, why are you still in this game? The Mothership Core is still alive. He pulls the probes to fight against this. And the probes are good against Camarader. In a, in a weird sort of way, I guess. He's not even he's not even sending the mules home. He's content to leave the mules here. He's like, I don't actually want your money. I just don't want you to have the, your money. That's I wish like you pure could evil. make your mules drop imagine the if money. You, imagine if you robbed somebody and then you just burned their wallet in front of them. You didn't even take the money. You're just like, you just that's just evil. Because I can. <laughs> well, Xenocider doesn't. He's like, I don't need these minerals. I just don't get why Hitman is continuing to go for an expansion. Try something crazy. Get a starport out. Start building. Void rays or something crazy like that, but the expansion? He can't afford anything. I don't know. He's just hoping that at some point Xenocider will do something crazy like rush to battle cruisers and open up a window, which isn't going to happen. <laughs> I think he could rush to battle cruisers and be pretty okay. <laughs> I guess so. I, you know, from this position, I think we could swap you in for him and uh, he'd still be able to win this game, Lycan. WSS Premier League Lycan. Yeah, I like the sound <laughs> of that. Mothership Core is going to die. Uh, GG is called. Xenocider takes game one against Hitman after a uh, pretty, pretty, pretty brutal start to that series. Hitman, I don't, I'm not sure if that's like if Hitman normally does that. I, I don't, ha I guess I haven't actually, I haven't beaten Hitman in like over a year. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess he just, maybe, maybe he's, maybe Hitman's actually nervous. Yeah, well, let's look at the perspectives of two players. First of all, Hitman has a reputation. Everyone knows what Hitman is going to be bringing to the table. So Hitman's thinking, okay, hey, let's go macro. It's going to, you know, catch him off guard. On the other hand, Xenocider, when's the last time you saw a Terran two racks of Protoss? It's been a long it's, time. It's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. If a Protoss finishes that Zealot, it helps so much with getting keeping that bunker from going up. And, you know, everything about that, it's not like, oh, one Zealot. It's like, just, you know, Zealots aren't OP guys. No, no, no. But it's being able to push the Terran back just for a little bit that allows your Stalker to ki get a couple more shots in. That allows your Mothership Core to get a couple more shots in. It makes you... Maybe you, have, you don't. Your probes can mine a bit longer before they have to be pulled, and all of those things make holding a two racks much easier. Because Xenocider has to pull SCVs to make a two racks work like that. So it comes down to these very small details, and in, you know, even stuff like Hitman. Just if he had gone for a 12 supply gateway, or an 11 supply gateway, or a 10 supply gateway, whatever he builds comes out so much faster. Yeah, he would have been in a really good position. Now we're going to move on to Coda, another two-player map. Uh, this is a position where Hitman could be like, all right, I'm going to pull out the guns I'm used to. And Xenocider probably going to be expecting it. Yeah, I imagine that Xenocider is going to try to play still a bit cheeky. Um, Coda is a pretty good mind drop map, in my opinion. And Xenocider is very... Xenocider is like me if I wasn't terrible. He likes he likes his cheesy builds, too. He likes to do mind drops as well. Um, and, and that's actually one of the builds I've had more success with against Hitman. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do something aggressive. I don't think I don't think Xenocider is just going to completely let up because Hitman's builds are so good at killing anybody who plays standard, especially standard builds just fall apart to the way that Hitman usually plays StarCraft. You know, one of the craziest things is that Hitman is always at the top of GM ladder, right? So that means that everyone who's played him knows exactly what he's going to go for, and he still wins games. He still has a very high yeah. win rate. 
Yeah, so he's, he's going to be great at executing. He's a monster, really. Um, he he is that guy. You see him in the loading screen. You're just like, oh boy, what's it going to be this game? Like the last time I played Hitman was maybe like two three weeks ago on this map, and I got proxy stargated in three gate void ray bus, and like I saw it coming, and there was still nothing I could do because he just controlled his army in such a weird way. It reminded me of uh, there was like a Kespa match recently. I think I think it was Classic versus Maru, maybe where like it happened on like Cactus Valley, and it's like. It seemed like the Terran, or maybe it might have been Flash, or it seemed like the Terran had everything that they needed to defend, and the Protoss still made it work. That's what this guy does. Like, he will find a way to kill you off of one base or with some sort of other aggressive cheese. Um, but he didn't try it in the first game, and he's down all one for it in the top left position of Coda. He's Hitman. And in the bottom right, he's up 1 0. Give it up for EG Xenocider. I think Hitman is a pretty accurate name, you know, just with the style he plays. I wonder if he went into the game thinking, oh, this is how I want to play. I like the aggression. Uh, you know, he Hitman, he's the guy that comes in, 86s you, and gets out the end. Yeah, that's that's the impression you get when you see Hitman. You know, if you if you had to think about, like, StarCraft play styles versus personality, Hitman would be the guy that you would send in to just take a, take a dude out. I, I can I can totally see that. And Xenocider might be the guy that you send in to, to torture somebody. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that two racks was torture, especially for Prodas. He had to be thinking, why did I cancel the Zealot? Yeah, I didn't even know Xenocider was a two racks here, to be honest. This actually changes my perspective on him. I'm going to have to have a talk with him, have some intervention. Um, he's uh, one of my. I actually like talking to Xenocider about builds a lot because he does mix it up to a good degree. He's not going uh, for a very fast uh, gas play this game, though. It's just going to be barracks into gas, which means we will see a Reaper. It's very important that Xenocider does all of the normal things. SCV scouting, then scouting all over the place of the Reaper, not getting caught off guard by proxies. Hitman is going to probe scout this game. He's not taking any chances. I like this from Hitman because it says, all right, I realize that if I want to win this, I need to make sure I'm not abusable in any in any way. And it's also good because he can see that it's not a gas first build. Those, you know, Xenocider will do something crazy if you play against him enough. He is not the, the most bland standard player. I actually took his gas a little bit later than I, than I realized. It's going to be two Marines probably into a quick reactor uh, Hellion play. So he's already doing something really weird. Hellion's pretty crazy to see against Protoss. There's something that can do a lot of damage, but if they're scouted, they will get shut down pretty easily, especially if there are enough gateway units to be ready. Uh, but he is going for them pretty quickly. Looking at the Protoss side of the map, nothing really crazy going on. Cybernetics Corey has the Zealot again, kind of worried about that engineering bay, engineering bay block, and that just might come down. Yeah, I don't think Xenocide is going to do it because it would delay his factory too much. But he wants to have the SCV here. And he's inspired some fear in the heart of Hitman. Like, if Hitman finishes that Zealot, then uh, it's a big victory for Xenocider because there's the factory. And it maybe it won't be... Yeah, there's no quick no oh. quick reactor, actually. There, He does actually end up eBay blocking. Oh, but the, he did cancel the Zealot. Oh, that's... Second that is, time um, in a row, that, that is Zealot. That is high-level Jimmy rustling right there on the part of Xenocider. He knew ex he like must have thought it out in his head. He's like, this is when Hitman usually would cancel a zealot. I don't see a zealot here. I think he canceled it. And Hitman must have been thinking to himself, it's so late. There's no way he's gonna engineer may block me in Xenocider. I imagine Xenocider uh, and Hitman have played each other on the ladder enough that Xenocider just went through all his replays and probably got these little finer details to figure out how Hitman has been playing. And, you know, there's so much money in the line. We talk about stuff like WCS points and you know getting the Premier League, but what does that what does it really mean for these guys who are are have no chance, right, of going to the global finals? You know, as if this $1,500 increase in how much money you're making. You're you're Xenocider. You're a, you're a high schooler. You are more than happy to take a, you know a couple extra thousand bucks for uh, from winning some StarCraft games. And Hitman, this would be like this might actually be like one of his biggest paydays if not his biggest payday already just getting into challenger yeah especially you know, this year with challenger giving out so much more money yeah especially imagine if you make it to premier league right you get to travel possibly to europe i mean for a kid these age i mean that's pretty incredible yeah that's uh that's actually really awesome getting to see the world is always nice just another uh, side benefit of course of competing in the wcs system uh to some extent at least um we see a robo coming down we do see the hellion so robo is definitely good if you wanted to get an immortal out something like that uh, he's not going to have to worry about Widow Mind Drops. He'll also have the option of detection if uh, Zeno I, I like were to this. go for that. I like this a lot. This is actually, it's funny because I, I mentioned the gas first, but he's he's still doing the same thing that we do off of gas first. He's just taking a slightly different way of getting there by uh, getting the barracks before the gas. It doesn't necessarily delay it too much, but it makes the build look different. And looking different is enough to sometimes confuse an opponent because normally to defend something like this, 
you want to get exactly what Hitman's getting anyway. So I am slightly worried. It's going to come down to control from Xenocider because well, three Stalkers and an Observer should be enough to completely deflect this attack with the help of Mothership Core. Well, Xeno likes drops, and he's actually very, very good at them. And we see a little, you know, unique positioning here, taking advantage of what he can. And I like the way he's coming in on this. Yeah, the Stalkers are getting some good hits, but it's pushing the Protoss back. Yeah, I mean, Xenocider is doing, for all intents and purposes, this is like the this is the opener that we both really, really like a lot. Um, it's, you know, even if it's not out of gas first, there's so much you can do with this. He's zoning out that ramp with that Widow Mine, and a couple of these Stalkers are actually so low. Stalkers don't really have the damage up, but necessary to kill Marines that are, that are like, in the process of being healed. Like, the heal per second is greater than the damage per second. Um, of a Stalker, or almost even two Stalkers against a single Marine. Yeah, Immortal coming out. Twilight Council just now coming down. And, uh, you know, not too bad for either player. Hitman didn't lose a lot. Xenocider didn't lose a lot. Lost a Hellion and a Marine. Yeah, things I'm looking at right now mostly are workers killed. Uh, Hitman is still in a really good place as far as workers go. Mostly because the biggest downside of a build like this is that Hitman has been producing off of Tunexite for quite a while. Uh, Xenocider, despite any damage he may have done, his orbital on his natural is not yet finished. So he's only been able to build one worker at a time for quite a while. And it's not uh, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. And there we go. There's Blink on the way. So I expect Hitman to still follow this up with a really big aggressive play. Yeah, definitely. And we look at Xenocider. He's keeping that drop on the back, trying to keep, you know, a little bit of threat there. There he goes. He's pushing in. Going to try to get a few more pro kills. He is going to get a few off of those stalkers. are going to prevent the medevac from getting out. So he's going to sacrifice these marines. Try to get as many kills as he can. Will he get another? No. Three pro kills go down. And he, Hitman doesn't overreact with the photon overcharge. No. No. Hitman's uh, playing a very, very cautious game, actually. He's going to go into a robo bay. Hitman's actually just playing super standard in this series so far. There's actually nothing really aggressive or cheesy about anything that he's done, to be perfectly honest with you. He could drop double forge after he starts his first Colossus and just play out the most like super, super standard, because this is just defensive blink. The only thing that hurts him is that he had to build the Immortal, which most of the time you'd rather not, since it just slows everything else down, because Fulton Overcharge usually defends your base for you. Right, so we see Hitman is on his two bases. He has blink halfway done. The Robo Bay is almost done. He's going to start the Colossi production. Stim isn't even done for Xenocider, not even halfway done. But he does have his upgrades, Combat Shield and plus one attack on the way. Double Marauder production. This is really weird, though. I'm just surprised to see Hitman playing like this. It's a very un it's not like it's bad. It's actually quite good, but it's just not... Um, not it's not what you'd expect from Hitman. It's not what you expect from Hitman. Xenocider is pushing across the map. Is Stim halfway complete? Hmm, I'm waiting to see if we're going to get forges. Yeah, double forge. Okay, so yeah, this is... Hitman is actually just playing super, super straight up you know, first Terran. There are players that have done that in the past. Stardust had a reputation for being cheesy, so he went out and he won a couple tournaments completely macro, trying to prove that, hey, you know, I'm not just a cheesy player. Aces Rogue, I believe, was one of those that he played in a pretty standard style, so maybe that's what Hitman's coming to do. Perhaps. That's kind of cool. I mean, for someone that we know so little about, he can actually, if he can actually play a straight-up game and win, especially against Xenocider, that would be pretty impressive. Xenocider is no chump, to say the least. You know, he he was in the round of 32 last season and still put up some really good games. Um, I'm very, very interested to actually just even just observe and watch this game, yeah, just as from the perspective of someone that's only known Hitman as the aggressor. Yeah, third base coming down for Xenocider. There is no second starport, just a lot of mar marauder production, so we're probably going to see that Maru style uh, against these Colossi. There is one Colossi on the map. The second one is on the way. And, I mean, there are force fields. There is blank. There is a photon overcharge. I really don't think Xeno can do too much. Yeah, this is uh, still, like, a, a very defensive posturing. Like, he's being very active with these stalkers, which is uh, risky, to say the least. But he can also always just sit back and try to drop, defend drops if Xenocider... Because we saw, I'm thinking about, like, when's the last time I saw Xenocider play TVP? I think he played, like, a match against Puck in some tournament. And, you know, he was all over the place with big, big drops. Um, and, wow, Hitman getting very aggressive now, moving out with that Colossus. Uh, now that range is done, maybe he just goes for a really big 1-1, one, one, two-base Colossus push. Yeah, uh, there are players that have been really known to do that. Lobo has a nice blink Colossus all in that he's done. Uh, I believe that's off of plus one. And... Now we see Xeno Decider trying to go for a drop, multi-pronged drop, actually. Oh, nope, that is just Oh, he's just going to take a third. Yep. Okay, so Hitman is playing this as straight up as humanly possible. He's going to rebuild that Observer. His army was in position to catch the drop because his Observer saw those four medevacs load up, and Xeno Decider was like, well, 
Don't want to deal with that. This Marine's looking to check the third base, but the Stalker actually ends up catching it. Another drop loads up and actually flies right past an Observer inside of Xenosider's base. So really good Observer placement, actually, I have to say, for Hitman. He's been very aware of everything that's gone on so far in this game. Yeah, map vision critical, especially when shutting down these drops. There is that Observer that could. Xenosider knew about it. Just a nice little scan and a snipe to remove that map vision. But now we do see that Xenosider is going for a drop on Hitman's third. And this gives Xenosider a good chance to pull the armies apart. Yeah, this is, this is actually a really, really... Um, elegant dance between the two of them because one of them doesn't want to overcommit to defending on one side, the other one wants to shut down the expansions. And the Stalkers are not here to actually protect these Colossi. One of them does get knocked down, a second one very, very low, but Hitman is cleaning up most of Xenocider's forces and not even allowing those Widow Mines to in it. He loses one Colossus, but Trey kills most of the Terran Bioball and has that third base secured. Yeah, so he's got those double upgrades that were coming down. Zealot Legs are on the way, and the third Nexus is just about to finish. Yeah, he didn't get it. Plus two attack is on the way for Terran, plus two armor as well. Uh, continuing to pump out Colossus, though, for Hitman. I think Hitman took the better engagement. Those force fields traded for one Colossi, but the large chunk of that bio ball. I'm surprised that Hitman is... The order that he's doing things is a bit interesting to me because I'm surprised he didn't go off the double forge straight into 2-2. Two -two. Mm -hmm. Charge Zealots, at least a plus two armor, are really, really good. But if Xenocider has an upgrade advantage, then no number of Zealots is going to help you uh, against a Terran player. Okay, now the 2-2 two -two starts. A bit late. Yeah, so once again, he's going to try to collapse on these Colossi there. Keep uh, not defended by the Blink Stalkers. No Blink Stalkers there to help them. So two Colossi possibly go down, maybe three, and here come the Stalkers. Oh, he cannot afford to lose these Colossi. Both of them very low, trying to chase. Oh my goodness, he actually keeps both of them alive with no health. Kills all that bio. The bio is gone. The medevacs have blown away. Uh, one gets picked off. I actually can't believe that just happened. But how useful now are those Colossi going to be with no health and no I, armor? I mean, if he, if he can keep them away from the Terran, I think it's still quite useful. Um, please, please get an Observer over here and take care of those mines. Okay. I was really worried for a moment. All right. So he gets those mines because, yeah, that would have been a one shot on both those I mean, Colossi. If, I think if he loses both those Colossi, this game is over, to be frank. But now, now that he's continued to bullshit that Colossus count and get 2-2, two -two, this is still manageable, but Xenocider is still, you know, playing a reasonable game himself. But, you know, him being ahead on supply, it says a lot. You know, Protoss is generally supposed to be behind. Uh, those two Colossi certainly would have put him behind. Now there is Viking production two at a time coming out for Xenocider. So those two at a time, especially with those weakened Colossi, if he focuses those ones down, they're going to go down the really funny, fast. The funny thing about that is, if you have enough Vikings, usually you're just one-shotting the Colossi anyway when they're at full health. Otherwise, you don't want to attack the Protoss. So if he gets a lot of Vikings, then it almost doesn't even matter because it's just overkill on the already dead Colossi. Like, all that matters is the Colossi get a couple shots off as those Viking missiles fly towards them. And now he has four Colossi, so Hitman is caught out of position, though. His third base is totally exposed. Yeah, so he's going to take a lot of damage. A lot of probes going to go down, the cannons, the pylons. Uh, he's going to recall, actually, into this and try to take it out, but the Nexus might still fall. It is going to fall, but there's all this bio. A blink, it was wasted to get on top oh, of the bio. He didn't get the full medevacs, actually. Only hit empty ones, unfortunately. Yeah, so a little preemptive with the blink. Had he done a little earlier, he might have had a little more success uh, cleaning that up. And yeah, now Hitman is on five Colossi. I think this, uh, if anything's going to trigger him to attack, this will be it as he picks up a few more of these medevacs. Or at least tries to. Very, very aggressive with these stalkers. He's not afraid to run into his opponent at oh, all. Oh, good move by Hitman. Yeah, dodging those, uh, dodging those Widowmine shots. Now the Vikings are going to focus on those weakened Colossi, like you said. Uh, but still, like that, they still got a couple shots off, and now there's still two full health ones that are really going to push their way through here. A lot of Xenocider's army is on the left side of the map. He's pulling his SCVs to try to defend against this. Yep, but the Vikings go down. The Colossi are going to get stand up. The Force Field's doing a great job, and the Marauders taking shots from and, the and Immortals. That, the Immortal, yeah, going to work. Now Hitman's going to get surrounded on all sides, but he has done a tremendous amount of damage. Another Colossus actually shows up to help out here, shaving away all these SCVs. The biggest question right now is can Hitman recover from any possible counterattack. He still has a good amount of stalkers. He loses the Mothership Core. One Viking. Actually, one Colossus does fall. A couple of those Zealot big warp in. He needs to keep his Colossi alive so much. Oh, he does. Great control from Hitman. He keeps the Colossi alive. The Blink Stalkers are there, and I think that Hitman has a really good chance. There is a ghost out. I, I mean, Hitman actually annihilated the economy of his opponent. He's got his 3-3 on the way, but keep in mind, even though that army supply is so low, uh, even though the supply in general is low for Xenocider, Hitman has a lot of extra probes, so Xenocider can still try to make something happen, but that was 
that was exactly the attack that Hitman needed. And I think if he's just given a little bit more time, he's going to be in a phenomenal position to close yeah, this game out. needs to protect that Colossa. He does have sentries to help Force Field. He's going to be able to zone out some of these. Uh, Zealot's coming in, taking uh, out the is, Marauders. This is actually just great. This is actually just fantastic for Hitman. He catches the rest of the Medivacs on the way out. It's like, yeah, EMP that. Excellent oh, position. boy. And so I think that Hitman has finally taken just such a, a solid lead. Yeah, it's only 50 to 45 supply, but 67 to 27 workers in favor of Hitman. I think the Protoss player is just about ready to close this game out. Yeah, I think Hitman can push now. Like, Xenocider is trying to rebuild a lot of the Medivacs that he lost. He doesn't have any Vikings on the map. There's still with three Colossi. Like, how is he ever supposed to stop Hitman from just taking this fourth base? I don't even mind that Hitman sits back and takes this fourth. Xeno has a fourth command center in the bottom left. But, I mean, there's some zealots being sent there to harass it. Um, it. It is not a planetary, so it actually could get quite a bit of work done on it. Yeah, we're seeing some really good play. Hitman not only just showing that he can play defensive, that he can play smart, but now he's, you know, doing a little bit of aggression. He's I keeping really on top. like how active he is with his stalkers. Most Protoss players do not just throw their stalkers forward like that in scenarios where he knows he can win. Most Protoss probably don't even realize that they can win in those scenarios when they do win in those scenarios. It's, it's actually really cool to watch. These observers are absolute money showing what Xenocider wants to do where he's trying to go with his medevacs. He's aware. He's aware of the medevac location every step of the way. Like, this is actually really nice, the way he spread the observers out. He just knows. And he has these zealots at the fourth base in the bottom left. He's going to force the army over. And then look, as he forces the army over, he brings his main army towards the natural again because he knows he has to bring a good amount of marines and marauders to actually kill those three uh, speed zealots. Yep, that ghost is going to go down without ever getting an EMP off. So these shields are just fine. Everyone's going to come up. They're going to have a little party in the Terran base. Yeah, there's, there's no Vikings, so what is he supposed to do? He knows that most of the army was lifted over to his base, but he actually left a substantial chunk of forces behind at that third to help defend against this. He was already prepared. There's Zealots here. There's an Archon. He's going to continue to warp in. He has those 3-3 three, three upgrades with the charge, and that should be enough for him to actually defend with just constant warp-ins as he starts to knock out Xenocider's production. He's got Zealots in Xenocider's third base. He's got Zealots moving in towards the main base. He's completely sweeped up the natural. He's just going to keep pushing. There's feedbacks on the medevacs, and just, you know, keep pushing those Zealots out. And there's a recall to finish things off. Yep, Hitman proving that he doesn't just play cheesy. In fact, two games in a row we saw him not trying to go for anything crazy. GG is called. Hitman ties up the series with a macro game. Probably one of the most solid Protoss first Terran games I've actually seen in a very long time. That I've, Yeah, that's actually really cool. Straightforward. Most TVP I cast, it's like, okay, well, you know, Terran plays going to go for some massive drops, slowly picks the Protoss apart. It's like, okay, well, meh. Or the Protoss does something cheesy. Hitman did absolutely nothing that felt abusive or even like super aggressive in that game he was just all over the place with defending with his observers and moving his stalkers around even the one time he got caught out of position he still he was still able to recover nicely with uh, the medevacs that he picked off i think that hitman knew xenocider liked the drop play and he was definitely on top of that he kept stalkers in the main yeah. to defend against drops he had his third base covered i think that hitman came into this very well prepared yeah, it was actually really, really nice just to see a, a Protoss pick a Terran apart like that. Like, Xenocider really just trying to drive the aggression and Hitman not having any of it. Um, it's a very, it was a very, very interesting series to be watching, completely outside of what I was expecting. Absolutely. Hey, I'm glad we're not ending on, you know, just a cliche note. It's not a stomp, and it's not what we expect from either player, actually. Both first game, we saw the cheese from Xeno instead of Hitman. Second game, I mean, I think the best part about Hitman is that you saw a plan, and you just kept trucking forward. Yeah, because it, it, I mean, that's kind of, you know, it's weird, because you think about game number one, how it ended so poorly with the two racks from Xenocider. And then it's like, well, Hitman just kept trying to force this, expand, and then get a robo and go for blink. And I'm like, okay. All right. I'm like, okay, maybe he's just going to just try to do like one base blink all in or two base blink all in. But it seems to me that his intentions, like he just kept trying to force his plan, which I, I imagine that in the first game, if he was allowed to live long enough, he would have actually gone robo or he would have gone for that blink into a robo, into Colossi, and then double forge, despite the fact that he lost like all his probes at the start of the game. Yep, next map, I believe we're moving on to is Cactus Valley. Yep. And I wonder if this will be the map where we see the Hitman we're expecting. I don't know what to expect anymore, man. We are loaded in. We are here. It is tied one apiece after this guy is the only one to have actually cheesed or even opened aggressively in this series. In the bottom right position as the Red Terran player is EG Xenocider. And in the top left, impressing everyone with his ability to play macro and beat Xenocider, it is the Blue Protoss, Hitman. Hitman, such an enigma. But such... we will learn the enigma if he wins this. That would be... That would be interesting. I would like to just meet this guy. 
I would just love to meet this guy. I think there's a lot of people who would like to meet this guy. <laughs> that is that is also probably true. Uh, I just, I don't know. In a dark alley somewhere in New York City with a pipe. <laughs> he, he, has a, he has certainly been a cause of a lot of rage, I'd imagine. Yeah. I'm sure there are many, you know, it's like, because yeah, it's, it's never just the person that's super greedy or cheesy on ladder that causes all the rage about it. Hitman is like that guy that inspires other Protosses to do it. Because all you need is like a dozen or so Master League Protosses to look at the Grandmaster ladder and they're like, that Hitman guy is always number one. None of his games go past 10 minutes. I can do that. And then you have a bunch of Zergs and Terrans who hate themselves because they play these guys that are learning from this, you know, learning from Hitman. But now Hitman's showing that he can win with Macro too. And that's, that's equally scary because you can't just blindly prepare for, you know, something crazy. Well, when people tell the story about how Protoss can get to GM with X build, Hitman is the reason they tell that story, because Hitman got Grandmaster in Wings of Liberty with almost only four gating. So yeah. that's really what he became famous for. Yeah, he's, he's, I'm sure that Hitman probably has an account for each build that Protoss can do off one base. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a proxy Oracle and a three gate Void Ray that he has used to get to GM every single matchup too. Like he's just, he's just that good at being aggressive and controlling those small aggressive armies. Three gate Void Ray, that's one, one heck of a build. Yeah, that's a that's a nightmare inducing build. Yeah, so we saw a command center first coming down for Xena Sider. The barracks is on the way. Uh you know, this is a, a nice map to open up if you're gonna go for economy. So both players seem to be going that economic route. There is a probe out on the map. Uh there's still that room though for Hitman to decide, hey, guess what? This is where Dark Templar or Proxy Oracle, something like that's coming out. Yeah, I would expect this to be like um just a regular probe scout. I'm no longer anticipating Hitman to play cheesy. Like, he has enough gas to go for a quick Stargate. Maybe this is where he mixes it up at last. Uh, but it could just be a Mothership Core as well. Yeah, yeah just a Mothership. That's what it is. Okay, well. All right. Could have been a quick Stargate. It's not. Nope. Nope, doesn't need to do that. We don't. He's a strong, independent Hitman that don't need no cheese. Yeah, that is a, that is a statement I would like to continue to uh, proliferate among Protoss players. <laughs> you guys do not need to attack me off one base. Please, please stop. <laughs> yeah, why don't you go home and expand? It, oh, and we see the uh, blink is going to be coming down pretty quickly. Yeah, but this could still be the defensive blink again. Like, that. Like the thing is, the thing, it's really funny, like, giving like a real serious um, analytical note to the way people play StarCraft around the world. There are people, like, when you play, if, I, if I'm playing on Korean server, and I see someone open Twilight Council and they expanded, I'm rarely thinking that it's like any type of aggressive play. And I guess since Hitman hasn't actually taken a Nexus, this should be aggressive. But most of the time when you see that Twilight Council, you're thinking, okay, it's probably something defensive because you're, you know, you're playing on Korea, they're usually gonna follow it up with some standard play. On NA server, it almost always means some sort of crazy all-in. But we Hitman, get a scan from Xena Sider, he does see yeah, the blink and Hitman it's is, Hitman is going to bring that all-in types play into uh, into fruition here. So we are finally going to see a little bit of his classic form. Let's find out how good his Blink Micro is. Yeah, how is this map for Blink? Honestly, I have not actually played versus many one base Blink Olins on this map. There's not a lot of space that you can use to Blink into the main from the outside, which is one of the reasons why I'm surprised that Hitman's doing it. But if there's one thing I know about this guy, it's that he definitely cheeses people enough that he has considered every possible scenario that can pop up from him doing this. I think in a lot of ways too, what he can do is he can force an overreaction out of Xenosider. He's gonna build bunkers, he's gonna build units, right? He's gonna sacrifice everything he can in economy to get as many units out that he's gonna be safe, right? And on the other end, I mean, Hitman could just soft contain. He could go for an expansion, he could be safe on his back end. Blink is a great opener, especially, you know, against things like Widowmine drops, right? You want that defensive Blink, something that can move quick. So really, it's very versatile, and if he can get enough done here, he can move back and go into that macro game. Yeah, it's games like this though, where it's like, when you're looking at someone like Hitman who commits so much to aggression, is he gets this really nice time for actually grabbing a few Marines. When you see, when you have a guy like Hitman who commits to so much aggression, it actually makes me think more about MC versus Thorzine on like Akalon Wastes in WCS Europe, like a year or two ago, where he actually just literally masked units outside of his base. He needs it's to be like, careful, that Mothership Core is very low. Like, it's possible that Hitman actually just never stops warping in out in front of his base and just keeps shaving away enough units that Xenocider is just locked in on one base forever. Yeah, 1v1. I feel that Protoss in the early game can definitely mask the kind of units that can really hurt a Terran who's locked on one base. Yeah, it is it is so tricky because Xenocider really still just wants to sprint up to stand. And there's that blink into the main base. This is the problem, though. I don't think there's, there's not a lot of space to actually blink away here. He's going to kill the Marauders and then blink and dance around. And 
Hitman has done this to me before. This is this is actually my experience in my games against him is that he just runs around like this. He's actually quite good at just endlessly running in circles, baiting you all over the place all day, nonstop. And it makes life it makes life really, really difficult for a Terran player when you're trying to deal with this, because he's killed off so many SCVs and all the power units are gone too. Yep, so we're looking at the Stalkers. They are surrounded. They are killing SCVs. 15 workers have gone down. That is a lot. Uh, the Marines are there. They're trying to chase it, and there are still five Stalkers left. Uh, Hitman has the option to warp in. He does actually have a few more Stalkers. He does have a Sentry. So there is a lot of opportunity for Hitman to keep continuing to be aggressive. He has a Mothership Core that did not die. It does have the energy for another Time Warp. So Hitman is in a great great position. I'm really excited to see uh, how he continues to move forward with this and I never thought I'd say I was excited for a Protoss to be using cheese, but look at me, here I go, and he is blinking this in, is, taking so many workers and marines down. This is what we were waiting to see, right? I mean, the Mothership Corps dies again, but Hitman is just so good at running, just running a circuit around Xenocider's base. Yep. Just blink, killing everything. A blink good unit and as we see the Stalkers just dancing around, 11 more SCVs have gone down, 12, that number is going to continue to rise and on the back end, I believe that Hitman is really open How to doing whatever he wants. How can one man be so good at killing somebody off one base? This uh, is this is actually this is exactly what happened. I, I thought I was so clever. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna build some bunkers. I'm like, this will be fine if he blinks past my base. I'll just pull my SCVs. Nope, doesn't work. He's hit, man. GG. Well, nope. We we, got, we, we asked for it and, yep. it and it hit us like a truck. Unfortunately, it hit Xenocider also like a truck. So. Hitman now finds himself up 2-1 in this best of five, and I'm wondering if he just cranks that dial a little bit further for, for game number four. Yep, we're going on to Dash and Terminal. Okay, if there's a map where you've got some crazy Protoss, you know, words I can't say, this is the map. This is it. Like shenanigans. That, shenanigans. If you have some crazy Protoss shenanigans, this has to be the map to do it, because you have that access to blink into the main base from by the gold. You have a ton of airspace for anything like oracles or void rays or tempests. You have that wide open natural expansion as well. You can blink that from like you know six different ways. Um, I I am actually this is like the map where this is the map that's going to make people veto dash and terminal for the next two weeks. Yep, his in. Coming here, you know, maybe he's playing macro because he doesn't want to show off his new cheeses, right? Doesn't want the ladder to learn in mass what's going on. But no, yeah. he's going onto this map. It's a map that something awesome could happen. Per perhaps Hitman was being considered in the first two games because I'm sure there are a bunch of Protoss players watching. You know who you are. I I know who you are. You you make me hate my life. You're all going to start blink all inning for another week, and, and it's not balance well, line. It's just something it's that just parents true. don't like it's, to deal well, with. No, that's how meta works, though. If he, if he wins with this, then other, you know, Hitman wins with strategies like this. It encourages other people to try them because everyone likes winning. And I can't fault you for that. I like I like mind dropping because all I see are Koreans beat people with widow mines. I mean, there's no better feeling than a big clump of probes that just... Whoosh. Yeah. Yeah. But if it didn't work, then we wouldn't try. So. No, nope, not at all. Anyway, we are going to be playing on Dash and Terminal. We're loaded in. I'm just curious to see because I think Xenocider could also turn it up, too. I think we could also see our Terran player here really uh, crank out something crazy. I wouldn't mind some gas first madness. Uh, in the top left position of Dash and Terminal, we have that red Terran from EG. He's Xenocider. Quite a handsome, handsome command center. Yeah, his opponent in the bottom right, uh, the blue Protoss, the cheese master himself, Hitman. I do want to give a shout out to Flo for observing all of the challenger matches that you guys have witnessed this week as uh this could actually be the, this could be the last last game we cast together like in yeah i know i hope it isn't i hope there's many many more but no yeah flo doing a great job and i've never actually casted with an observer observing for me so uh she's done yeah. awesome yeah flo flo makes our jobs easy peasy hitman though 10 supply gateway Tens of like gateway and denying reapers from coming up that wall this is pretty much what we were talking about you know, we can talk about Hitman openings. This is the kind of build that allows Hitman to get a very fast Zealot if he wants, a very fast Cybernetics Core for a Stalker if he wants, a very fast Cybernetics Core for a Mothership Core. Mothership Cores can actually just outright win you the game on this map if you rally it straight across off 10 Gateway and the Terran player opens Reaper. Yep, so that very well much, very much could be what he does. Now, something a, a Terran can do is build a quick bunker, right? It's only 75 minerals once you sacrifice it. It's not a big investment, but if you have a Mothership core coming into your base, you want that bunker and you want a couple Marines in it. Yeah, it's actually kind of uh, interesting. I really, I imagine, I hope Xenocider actually opens with Marines. 
Um, because this map gets vetoed so much, and Xenocider might actually have it vetoed on ladder. But for any of you who don't know, against a standard 12 barracks, 12 gas, Reaper expand, if you go 10 supply gateway, mothership core, and you just rally to the Terran base, you can get there before they have enough marines, and then you just win because they have no production. That's why you need that bunker. Yeah. Yep. It's not like an Imba thing, but as a Terran player, you should also be very mindful of this when you're SCV scouting. It also is a reason why you should SCV scout, and if you see something like this, build a fast bunker. Of course, Hitman has many other options available to him. This could still be an in-base Stargate, could be an in-base Twilight. There's many things that this could be. I just happen to believe that the Mothership Core is like the easiest bop to get if uh, if that's what you go for, but he's actually not chronoing out that Mothership Core. It is going to be a quick Stargate, and he doesn't mind that this SCV is here and could actually go see it. Yeah, so I mean, this is the first close by air spawn in a long time, Nate. And I think Hitman is deciding that he's going to take advantage of it, not with the Mothership Core, but he's going to be pumping out some Oracles, or maybe we're going to see that three gate uh, Void Ray follow up. That's exactly what I'm expecting to see. I, I, I would be surprised if we had anything else other than an Oracle or two into um, a very heavy Void Ray push. Could even be one of those like madness builds, like, um, like five Oracle or something really insane. This Reaper though, as that Stalker really wanted to uh, get out onto the map, this Reaper's actually be able to be quite annoying. Every probe kill is really big in a situation like this when the Protoss is cutting so many corners to get aggression out. Yep, a lot of it is about timing, getting things out when you want them to have them out, and that probe is something that needs to be replaced so you can keep the economy and pump things out. Yep, we have the Chrono going into that Oracle as it is on the way, but Xenocider has a missile turret coming in. And this is where things get really interesting because most of the time when the Protoss player um, is being aggressive like this, you want to have the Stalker out on the map because the Stalker allows you to put frontal pressure. You want to pull the Marines away from that turret because if the Marines aren't by the turret and that Oracle goes in and kills the Marines, then the three gate follow-up insta wins you the game. Um, and on the other hand, we also have to keep in mind that if uh, if the Terran player doesn't, I mean, doesn't move their Marines, then the Stalker can also just delay things like the Command Center and just be annoying in general. Yeah, I'm not feeling too good for Hitman on this map. He's got the turrets ready, Xenocider has the Marines, and a Command Center coming down, so I feel that Xenocider is in a good position. Oh, now, yeah. Oracle goes picking, down. Picking off that Oracle is really big, especially since Hitman built a second Oracle, and if Hitman builds a third, if he goes full madness with this build order, then I'm really concerned. Yeah, he's going to start another Oracle. Losing that first one really hurts because... You know, when you have two Oracles, you're obviously going to one-shot the Marines. But if you're going to go for a gateway follow-up, you need as many Oracles as possible. Because once you have, like, four or five Oracles, four Oracles, I think, is, like, the magic number. You can just walk in and just actually just click on the missile turret. You can kill it. You can out-DPS the SCVs that are repairing it. And then still have a lot of damage left to do some damage to the SCVs. Look what's on the production tab. That looks like more gateways. So we are getting four gate, actually. Yeah. He is uh, no Void Rays, so it's not full Maximus Black style. But this reminds me of, uh, of a player that I, I've run into on NA quite a few times, known uh, goes by the handle Oracle King. And I think, you know, very fitting. He opens up with lots of Oracles, and then he kills you with them. That is the goal of the Oracle. Yeah, every yeah. every game I've played versus him, he opens with uh, five, six Oracles, and then eventually goes up to like 20 Oracles. He actually just doesn't stop building them. So this is where the Void Rays would definitely come into handy. Xenocider is going to bunker down and yeah. fortify himself. I'm imagining that he doesn't want to get Void Rays because he's anticipating that his Stalkers will kill enough that the SCVs get pulled. And if you pull SCVs against Oracles, you just lose. Now that I think about it, this is actually one of the ways that I've lost to Hitman on ladder. Is uh, you, you get He gets into like this really weird spot, like runs by your bunker, and then you pull SCVs. He's like, oh, he ran by the bunker, I can pull SCVs. And then Hitman's like, no, 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 no. And then he just kills you. Well, there are two Widow Mines, there are two bunkers and a missile turret. Yeah, I, I don't think he can run past this. Oh, Okay, is he aware of that second line? That's a really big deal. This this defense is really nice, but keep in mind that Hitman, Hitman can actually walk around the side of this still, too. Like, this is, he doesn't actually have to attack from this angle to uh, hit the natural. You can go from the north of the natural. You could also break down the rocks. Yeah, and Xenocider, he's sending out a drop. What does he have in that drop that he's going to try to do on the back end? Perhaps a mine or a couple more Marines. Uh, there we go. Okay, both mines have been taken down. Yeah, I wouldn't mind either. I mean, Hitman is getting ready to try to crack this one open right now, and this is still a really, really tense situation as uh, Xenocider knows that if he defends this attack, you know, it's not over yet. He's, this isn't, uh, it's not, it's not, Xeno, Hitman's the one that if he wins this game, he moves on to Premier. Um, 
And this is still really, really crazy. Yeah, so that Viking zoning out the Oracles, not letting them get any damage done, and he didn't bring the Stalkers with him. Now there's the medevac completely empty, maybe, actually. Maybe he was just using it to scout the gold, I'm not sure. Hitman's gonna move in on top of this base, force fields away that bunker, steps in, gets the kill. He's using the Oracles as well. They're eating a lot of missile turret shots, but he out DPSs the SCVs repairing, and this is exactly what he was trying to do. Now if he could get that Viking, oh, loses the Oracle. Really, really big deal. That Oracle had so much energy on it, but without a bunker, I mean, he's gonna lose, he's gonna have to forfeit the natural expansion. I, I don't know if he can actually come down and defend this. His second Viking comes over, maybe he lands them, he has the medevac there to try to pick up wounded marines. Yeah, but he's just letting the Vikings sit there do, idly, not doing anything. Now he finally lands them, could have repaired them while they were fighting, but he's bled out seven SCVs to that and taken down a lot of damage with the bunkers and the missile turrets. I still think that Xenocider is in an okay spot because he has that second command center, he's ahead on SCVs, and you know, slowly but surely, things, unit, units like Medivacs are going to give you so much more longevity. Now, he's coming up actually towards where this pylon is, and I think biggest loss would be this Medivac. He actually does pick it off. That's a really big deal. He could actually go for the Vikings, too. Those Vikings are a bit, uh, bit more expensive than the Marines, and they can't go inside the bunkers. Yeah, he's got to be careful. There is no blink, and there is a Widow Mine. Oh, so. boy. So Hitman is actually going to really make something of this uh, scenario in this game. Imagine if he kills that Viking and this missile turret. He has another Oracle in production, and Xenocider has to respect that possibility of either dealing with a with an Oracle or a Void Ray since they're just so good at bursting down these buildings. Yeah, I think at this point I would have gone for the Void Ray. It's definitely a lot of extra damage against the armor and with the Viking, with the bunkers continuing to pop up. That's a lot of some, you know, that uh, prismatic alignment would have been great to have. Yeah, oh my goodness, the Viking went out towards Hitman's base, and that means it's not at home to defend against this Oracle. Oh boy, baited up the Widow Mine with his Zealot. Uh, does kill both of the mines, actually kills this bunker, and this is actually a really crucial moment right now. Where is the Oracle? Is it going to come in here and try to help kill these Marines? No, he's just sitting back. It's like, you guys need me? No, no, I don't need you. All right. Well, I mean, he could use it for detection, but oh, okay, now he showed the Oracle. Maybe, oh, maybe he just used it to kill really this mine. Should. I think killing the mine with it would be ideal. Uh, or losing your army to the mine. Run One of those. past it, run past it. The splash damage can actually kill like two stalkers. Oh, and it, will. it does. Okay, now the Oracle comes in. It's going to try to focus on the Marines, and the SCVs get pulled too. Zealots are on top of said Marines, and uh, that Oracle really not doing what I believe uh, Hitman was hoping it would, as Xenocider is still just turtling in on one base. Yeah, so he's continuing to produce units. There's the Viking back there trying to look for something else coming from Hitman. Uh, it would have been great to have it there to defend, but again, the Oracle didn't get a chance to do too much. That Widow Mine, that Widow Mine is MVP right now. It's MVP status for uh, for Hitman. And like, oh! look at that target. It's a target, another, another two kills. Yeah, so that is not a good position for a Hitman to be in, uh, producing all this off one base while Xenocider still does have two base. If he can get out of here, he does have the economy to finish off the game. Yeah, I, I think um, I think Hitman actually has this, uh, ha ha has to give up now. Like, Xenocider has this one in the bag. He's going to warp in a few more Zealots here. Another Oracle is going to come over, but he drops on top of this army because he knows, like, this army is just so weak. He can't stand up to Marines and Marauders. Not th not like this. No. Yeah, the Widow Mine would have been good. Maybe not focus it down, but let it do a little splash damage on the bio. That might have been nice. There is a very low medevac. Another Oracle comes over, and it's actually doing quite a bit of damage, but there are too many uh, Marauders for these Stalkers. Hitman got very close to breaking Xenocider, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. I don't mind Phoenix uh, as a way to deal with the Widow Mines, because the Widow uh, Phoenix can soak up one mine shot, but I think it's just a little too little, too late. The biggest issue is that he didn't kill the natural command center Xenocider, so no matter how many workers he kills, Xeno can always take that expansion as soon as it's possible, whereas now Hitman builds a Nexus, he's, you know, he can't actually stop Xenocider if he just marches across the map. No, 35 to 23 workers, a Nexus that isn't even done, 36 to 10 army supply, and now we have a drop that is going to go over and is probably going to clean up Xenocider. Xenocider is going to go clean up Hitman. Well, this has already been a very exciting series, to say the least. I'm very interested to know what's going to happen uh, in the next game, because I really feel like Hitman's going to have a borderline impossible task of stopping this, as the drops do hit for Xenocider, his stim very close to completing as well. The natural's going to get cancelled. There's no detection for the Widow Mines. GG gets called, and Xeno ties things up 2-2 two, two here. What an explosive series to finish up Challenger for WCS America. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. So we are now tied up 2-2. Hitman coming into his stride, getting us the games that we expected to have from him. Xenocider, you know, not backing down. There were a lot of times during that game where I thought Xenocider was done. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, it really came down, in my opinion, to losing that Oracle. Once he broke the bunker and that Viking got that last hit, like if he'd killed that Viking and, or just pulled the Oracle back earlier, I think that Oracle alone could be a game saver. Kill the Widow Mine that, you, that killed, like, 
three, four stalkers because he got two double kills on him. Yeah, so that was that widow mine was a real champ. There were a lot of little things here and there that could have helped Hitman just a bit, but it also comes down, you know, Xenocider had to make some really clutch decision making in terms of getting his SCVs in repair and. It's a scary position, because I've been in that spot where you're like, oh, I've got two bunkers, two mines, two missile turrets. There's no way a Prados can kill me on one base. The, the, the famous last words of many Terran players before they surrender their ladder points. Absolutely, but Xenocider showed that he is a formidable opponent, that he is not going to back down to some silly Protoss cheese. And, I mean, you know, nah, actually, Hitman's cheese isn't silly. It's something to be reckoned with. Yeah, don't worry, guys. Most of your opponents on ladder won't be Xenociders, so feel free to bust that out and collect Terran tiers. It's a very strong way to crush a Terran player if you're, uh, if you're the kind of guy that doesn't like to build Nexi. Yeah, no. Nexi, that's less money for units. That's true. It's very true. So the last map of this series, the last map of the day, will be Iron Fortress. Um, I have also had the pleasure of getting wrecked on this map, especially by Hitman. And there is some, this would be like a decent Void Ray map. I don't know how exactly he wants to play it out. We could see him bust out another standard game. But this map will decide which one of these two players goes to Premier League for Season 3 of the World Championship Series. I think maybe War Prism Dark Templar. There's a lot of open in that main base for him to, to fly around. There are a lot of yeah. ways to multi-prong attack. I don't know if he likes to play. And I, I, Maybe he just knows that one standard style and all of his cheese builds on top of it. Because that one standard style could be like, this is my I'm not cheesing you build that I can use to like, get a one up on you. Mm -hmm. But still, this series has just um, really questioned how I how I look at life in StarCraft. You know. Well, watch Hitman after this. He turns the tide and he goes on the ladder and only plays straight up, and everyone loses because they play overly defensive. That would probably be make a lot of sense. He's got to protect his ladder points. Actually, in order for Hitman to properly practice his standard game, he probably had to make a smurf just because people wouldn't give him regular games normally. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we are getting into the next game. This is the final game for WCS North America Challenger for Season 3 in 2015. Spawning in the top right corner, it is EG Xenocider. We just tied the series up to two against this gentleman in the southeast of Iron Fortress. He is Hitman. Don't know if he's on a team anymore, but he does represent all your worst nightmares and fears when you play versus Protoss on the lap. Yeah, Hitman, extremely, extremely exciting player to play against. Exciting for us to watch. And I feel that Hitman, uh, you know, could really pull out anything. I expect everything from this guy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what makes him such a dangerous player. When you can do cheeses like he's done as well as he has done them, but at the same time flip back onto a really, really solid macro game, like there's not really much more you can ask. And that, those have always and very consistently been the marks of top-tier Protoss players, being able to always get inside the heads of their Terran opponents, you know, bait them and trick them and get around inside their minds and all that other voodoo magic. Um, but... Hitman, so far this game, does not open up with 12 supply, or excuse me, a 10 supply gateway. He gets 13 supply, much more standard setup from the Protoss player to kick things off here. Yeah, so I do believe t uh, Hitman is, in fact, uh, teamless. So I wonder what he's thinking. You know, he's sitting here, he's, uh, you know, getting ready to go into WCS Premier, one game away. Uh, do you think teams are looking for a player like Hitman? I honestly have no idea. I mean, I'm, I'm all for... Um, hardworking American players that, uh, you know, the scene doesn't give enough credit to getting opportunities to compete and compete outside. But I was always under the impression that Hitman didn't want to. As far as I'm aware, there are, this is one of the very few seasons where Hitman has actually tried to qualify for WCS. And I, I actually wouldn't, I haven't followed Hitman's progress in them because I rarely see his name in tournament brackets for things like this. But I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me this was only the first or second time he actually attempted to qualify for the World Championship Series, and for whatever reason, it seemed that um, I, 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 it was always something like he just wasn't interested, or you know, there's like a reason why he's so secretive. You know, like he just doesn't, he just, you know, he just keeps to himself. You know, maybe a very shy guy in real life. And uh, look at this, Nate. We are going to see another expansion. Yeah, another quick Nexus build from it, man. This could still go into something crazy like a two two base blink, but I'm I'm getting a feeling it's going to be macro now. But I guess to answer your question, it really comes down to what Hitman wants because he's the kind of guy that has the skill in NA that if he showed up and competed in a bunch of stuff, because he didn't show up to play in like any offline tournaments either, like uh, IEM Toronto, for example. Yeah, no, haven't seen a lot of Hitman. Um, really actually don't know if I've ever seen him in any, any of the online tournaments that I've watched. Uh, I believe you are correct, though, that this is one of the only times he's attempted to qualify for WCS. I know earlier in uh, 
in HOTS and in Wings of Liberty, he wasn't, you know, in early in HOTS, he wasn't playing. In Wings of Liberty, he just didn't care to try. Yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't really his prerogative to say the least. And like I said, he hasn't shown up at any offline events. I haven't seen him at anything like uh, MLGs or anything along those lines over the course of you know the as the years have gone by. Like in, in well, he could have shown up and just not competed, and you wouldn't know because you don't know what he looks wow, like. Wow, that's really that's actually really scary now. Right. Now, now that I hit think man about it. <laughs> <laughs> in the shadows, you don't know it's a hitman, but it is a hitman. Well, he's going to go for that Twilight Council on two bases again. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's defensive blink once more. Xenocider, though, he's going for that two base mind drop style. And if it was an aggressive blink from Hitman, he would actually be in a kind of weird place because you usually don't get a robotics facility with that sort of opening. And I would still proffer that once he starts blink, he needs to get to that robo really quickly. Otherwise, a mind drop could be really, really successful against him. Yeah, mind drop's not something that... Uh, Protoss like to deal with, yeah, it can get in and kill a lot of probes, and at the very least, it's going to force you to put in tech you didn't want to get into, and uh, delays mining. So, yeah. and the biggest thing is, you know, if you if you're a kind of guy that likes to be aggressive like Hitman, it makes it very tough um, since you always have to pull back and defend. You know, I've only ever actually taken one map off of Hitman, and it was with a mind drop because he went blink and didn't have detection. Like that was that was. I was actually asked Xenocider for advice. I was like, "How do I beat Hitman?" He's like, "Well, he's probably not gonna get any tech. He's just gonna try to cheese you with one thing, and it probably won't be a robo." Yeah. Well, we have the tech coming down now. There are some Marines coming to possibly do a push. In fact, that's they are, and they might catch a Stalker out of position. Uh, there's a Widow Mine also behind it, it's just pushing straight forward. Yeah, he's gonna try to burrow this Widow Mine right up on top of the probes, and oop, it will be denied from burrowing. Really nice. He does lose one Stalker. Oh my goodness! Actually, some of the probes gotta get pulled forward. Uh, hits uh, one of them at least. Yeah, but these Marines also do scouting work, too. Yeah, two Stalkers going to get uh, killed. A nice little block there, but the Marines are going to be able to see what tech. They see the Blink is getting chronoed, and there is a Robo in two more gates. Yep, so if he clicked on it, he would know, okay, for sure, it is a Robo. It's not going to be any type of cheese, but Xenocider actually starts a bunker anyway. He is a little bit concerned about having to deal with just some uh, three-gate pressure off of Blink Stalkers. And at the same time, there's that medevac drop to try to get uh, some widow mines in place. But all the stalkers are more than in position now. Yeah, stalkers in position and the detection tech on the way. So Hitman, very good position. There's the mothership core also with the photon overcharge. It's going to be great. Here we go, boost in. Widow mine is going to get to plant. Hitman doesn't see it. He does oh, see he it doesn't. now. And three probes are going to be sacrificed. That's actually quite good. Uh, he comes in to chase on the medevac. So the, the observer is on top of the mine, but not able to kill it just yet. And the Marines are looking to target fire down any probes that they can get. Not actually too much. I actually really like Hitman's position in this game. Xenocider has not gotten um, too much for what he's wanted. Nope. Hitman's in a position where he could actually counterattack with a lot of stalkers and potentially win this game. And that's exactly what it's going to do. Hitman likes to position himself. He's moving his stalkers out on the map. He doesn't have Stim a Stim has prior. only just started. Oh, that is not a good position for any Terran to be in, especially against an aggressive Blink. He has no barracks on the high ground, and he really doesn't have any Marauders, does he? Nope. Two are on the way right now, but those will be his first two. He just jumps straight in the main. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, forget that bunker. He's like, I know you don't have anything here. Immediately targets down these Marauders. Um, not enough to one-shot them, but still enough to do a lot of damage. And he's going to do that. He's going to give him the runaround again. Like, Yep, the Blink dance. Oh, man. And he has to chase him. This Wood of Mine's going to try to plant, try to go to expect where he's going to be. Hitman doesn't see it, so there's very well the chance he's going to blink on top of it. One stalker goes down. Not too terrible. Nine SCVs have gone down. Yeah, I, I mean, he has just done, he's done a lot of work on this mineral line, and he goes to the natural. These Marines trying to shoot from above as well. But he's just killing tons and tons of SCVs. 16, 18 of them have been worked away at. And in the meantime, he's getting 1-1 one, on one his forges. He's getting uh, a robotics bay to move into Colossi. Like, Hitman, this will cost him a lot of stalkers, but at 25 SCVs to 48 probes, he's actually got a lot going for him behind all this, and he's gonna he's gonna run away with a few of these. He's gonna get one more SCV kill. 23 SCVs total went down in that engagement. That was a great, great decision for Hitman to do that counter attack. That, that was, wasn't enough. That was amazing. Like now, Hitman is in such a good spot. Look, he just drops a cannon in each of his mineral lines. He's like, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about mines. I can just take a third base. And with Colossi already on the way, there's nothing I really need to worry about. And these, stalk these stalkers are still just putting on pressure. Yeah, yeah, still putting the pressure on Xenocider to the point where he's... Oh, wow! Xeno attacked his own mine. Oh. He actually helped him uh, kill it. Man, that is not a good thing to do. What can, Zeno <laughs> what can Xenocider do? Can he come back? Does he have to mass uh, bunkers and just try to get some drops in? I, Xenocider, I think he may have bitten off more than he could chew with that early aggression. Like, and I'm, I'm currently trying to think about what my first words to Hitman will be when I see him in real life for the first time. He's not BM. He's just really cheesy. Um, <laughs> this is uh, 
This is pretty exciting. I, I don't I, like you, but Hitman. I respect you. Yeah. <laughs> Hitman's in a pretty good position right now, looking at uh, his chances to get into Premier for the first time uh, for, for WCS to come and play offline. This is a really rough spot to be in for Xenocider. He's behind on workers, he's behind on army, and frankly, he's behind on tech because there's no Vikings to deal with this Colossus. Yes, these, this Bioforce, it does have four Marauders, Stim, and a Medivac, but that's really not going to do anything. There were some... Uh, Look yeah. at this, he jumps up, snaps that Medivac, doesn't lose any Stalkers. Like, he just recognizes these little opportunities to just jump forward and be crazy aggressive. I love Hitman style, especially with these Stalkers. You know, bringing the Stalkers back to get just a couple more worker kills, knowing that he was just so far ahead that any worker he get was, got was gravy, despite losing all those Stalkers. So just the decision-making is really awesome. Yeah, Hitman is playing a phenomenal series here, especially off the back of some you know, standard, you could say, play, but he's just able to make, you know, a build that's normally very, very safe, very defensive, works so well once he had the opportunity to counterattack against Xenocider, and now Xeno is forced to, like, really Xenocider's biggest opportunity to win this game, his only chance is to get some big drop in, snipe a Nexus, get out without losing any bio, and then do that drop again when the base is rebuilt while simultaneously hitting with a second army somewhere else. Yeah, Xenocider, he's going for a really, really far, far drop, and that's the smart thing to do because if you look, Hitman has excellent, excellent uh, observer spread. Yeah, he, one of the things that he's done really well so far in this series is not be caught off guard by things coming towards his base. His observers are watching uh, two very common exits outside the Terran base, and then, of course, one by that watchtower. Yeah, but he's keeping he's keeping guard of his third base. I don't really see anything getting done, so now he's going to try to go into yeah, the main. There's no reason to move his Colossi away. Like He doesn't need the anti-air as much because the Vikings weren't really that big of a deal, but he also has all his Colossi together with the Foot and Overcharge, and then all the Stalkers are in the natural. So if you try to drop on top of that, he's going to crush that too. It said he's going to try to swing all the way around to the main base. So Zeno Insider played the long con. This could be his opportunity. Yeah, he's going to get in here. He could possibly get a lot of probe kills, but he's hesitating. Oh. He might try to go for the third instead. I mean, a pylon will see him. He's positioning himself. He wants to force the army over towards the natural and then see if he can hit that third base. Look at all those stalkers, Nate, and all those colossi that would have collapsed on that bioforce. There he goes. He's going to drop in. He's going to kill this. Uh, all these gateways are going to get canceled. He needs to get in there and do some economic damage, not focus on nothing. Yeah, I mean, here he is. There's, there is an army outside the base that wants to go to the third base once he actually takes this step forward. But, oh my goodness, blows oh. everything up! Full wow. medevac goes down to the blank. Excellent control. The Colossi Hitman. are here, too, to defend this base. Who wouldn't mind? Oh, might get a nice... Oh. Just a zealot. Just a single zealot kill. The sentries could have gone down, but they didn't. Uh, Hitman, has, Hitman has taken phenomenal trades in this game. Yeah, I'm still ahead. 61 to 49 workers. Army supplies are about equal, but Hitman... Is charging forward, especially on upgrades too. I mean, Xenocider at this point, he's a two-base Terran against a three-base Protoss. There is there is no universe where I spin that the Terran is in a good spot. Xenocider needs to make a big play. He tried with those three medevacs. He lost two medevac worth of units and got nothing for it. Now, two more medevacs into the main base. Look at all these stalkers. Boom, one medevac down, two medevacs down. He'll trade a few stalkers. He's got enough money, he doesn't care. Yep, force fields on the other side, cleaning up some of those marauders. There's just a small bio force that has a snowball's chance in hell of doing anything at this base. Yeah, he's getting a few probe kills, but here comes more stalkers. The extended thermal lance doing a great job. <laughs> Hitman, the Enigma, looking to go to Premier League. He has shut down every single push Xenocider has brought his way. He has shut down every single drop. He has shut down everything. And in the games where he has played standard, he has been able to find himself in a comfortable enough spot to actually win and go to Premier for the first time. This is this is amazing. Yep. I, I mean, he's going to force one more fight, and after that, we will have the epic counterattack to, to end all series of counterattacks. Nate, you know what I really like about the series is that no one is going to be able to come away from this and say Hitman won just because he cheesed. Hitman proved that he's a very versatile player and did an excellent job. Yeah, he had, a, he had a perfect variety of builds, you know? We had a couple of one-base strategies that he used insane micro and decision-making for, and then these games where he just basically battered back the Terran, and he didn't even do anything, like, cheeky, you know? There was no, like, oh, you know, DT drops. Like, no, Hitman, he scouted, he had observers everywhere, and even in the few times he got caught off guard, he came back, you know, just guns blazing. Yep, there are those Archons morphing in after taking away all the healing power. And look at the <laughs> friendly fire killing all of those medevacs with the final shot from the Photon Cannon, trying to do something at the third. But these guys... Ah. Yeah, Hitman's just going to kill him. Hitman's going to end it right here, right now. Hitman is going to Premier League for the World Championship Series and one of his first times ever actually trying to get there. This is, this is pretty sick. Yep. I'm really, really impressed, really blown away. GG is called.
and Hitman is going to premiere. Hitman is going to premiere off the back of an excellent best of five, going all the way to game five. Yes. I don't really have words for this. Nope. That was, uh, that was a really well-played series by Hitman. That was incredible. I'm, I'm definitely glad that that was the series that we ended off. Yeah, that was... I don't know what to tell you guys. I thought Hitman was going to come in and cheese every single game, and he played some really amazing macro. I'm very excited to see how he... I'm very excited to meet this guy. Mm -hmm. I hope he gets drawn into an America group so I can actually meet him. Just yeah. I just need to know, you know, because I I'm, I'm I won't even be sure if I see him on like the European studio cameras, like if it's like a hallucination or something. Really, really uh, exciting times as we do have a new American player qualifying for Premier for season three. Great, great games today. Excellent games today. A lot of good people going through. Really happy to be here. Yeah, um, this has been a really, really awesome couple of days. We went through quite a few best of fives to determine who the seven players advancing from the North American region would be to WCS Season 3 Premiere. If you missed any of the action yesterday, Masa, Jadong, and Neeb all qualified. And today we had Kane, Polt, Violet, and Hitman. Only two players that qualified through the open brackets that we had running over the last few weeks only two players actually managed to make it to Premier. Neeb and Hitman, two Protosses. Feel free to whine. It was, uh, but both both played so well, and you know they had to take it to the limit in Game Five to win both of those matches. Yeah, even as a Terran, I'm excited to see them. New blood is new blood. It's yeah. really good to see them in Premier League. Yeah, especially as a Terran watching Neeb. You know, will he convince me to also switch races? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But uh, that was that was absolutely amazing. I'm I'm really happy to have been here. Glad to have had you here. Like into uh, to cast. Hopefully you had a good time. Excellent time. Glad to be here, Nate. Yeah. So it's been a great uh, great couple of days of games. I believe European Challengers starts in about a week or yep, so. On the 27th. The tw All right. Uh, 27th at uh, 5 p.m. CEST. You guys will check that out. I believe that's 8 p.m. or 9 a.m. or 8 8 a.m. approximately uh, Pacific time for those of you tuning in from America. But uh, that's going to be it here from us from the studios out here in Burbank, California. We will see you for Premiere in a couple weeks.